there's one other candidate who was invited, but he decided not to come. So that's for Vancouver. So with that, we'll get started. And again, I want to thank all of you for coming today. Um, really good turn. Uh, so the first person to speak today is Kurt Chensel. Kurt? I'm not the only speaker. Thank you. Well, I'm Kurt Chancellor, obviously, and uh, I really appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to be here and to speak. We have a real next bag of nuts running through this office. Uh, there's a lot of us, number one. We're all different, uh, quite different. Uh, myself, I'm a constitutionalist. I've got a part of the Constitution to the Patriot Union for about 12 years. I've been a small businessman here in this valley for 32 years. And I've been working for the U.S. Observer. Uh, it's a uh, very conservative and aggressive uh, paper. Uh, it has about 150,000 hard copy circulation. And uh, we're picked up uh, in every English-speaking uh, country in the world. And we have pretty good circulation. My uh, forte for the paper is investigations of corruption. And I investigate law enforcement, the judiciary, and uh, prosecutors. And uh, we've been doing that, like I say, about 12 years. It surprised me that when I was investigating uh, corruption in Boulder, Colorado, uh, in, in uh, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and several other places, that that corruption is common everywhere we go. And it's, it's, it's common because we're run by administrators and our elected officials in many instances, have, have ceased to what I believe is do their job. And uh, they let the administration do it. And uh, we have, uh, in this county, I believe, is uh, in pretty good shape financially. We have a pretty sharp uh, county uh, administrator. I don't agree with uh, him on a lot of things, but uh, he's, he's steered the course. He's kept us in pretty good shape. I have no argument with that. I, uh, my argument with is back to the administration. Uh, the county may be doing good, but the people in this county are not. The private sector is not doing well at all. Everybody's uh, businesses are ailing. Uh, Jackson County's policies and land use issues has put out about 19 small businesses uh, in uh, recent history, nine being one of them. Uh, I've also found that uh, it's interesting that Home businesses make up a tremendous amount of small businesses that people never talk about. You never see them. And only a few people know about them. And the, the people that know about them use them. And we also found that they, these people, whether they were beauticians, barbers, uh, small uh, businessmen that did uh, mechanical work, fabrication, most of them were very, very good at what they did. And most of them ran an operation that most people didn't even know they were there. You had to look for them alley entrance, they didn't have signs, and our county systematically shut them down when they find them. And uh, they have a process that they put you through, but very, very few of them will ever be able to comply. Uh, I believe uh, that the economy is going to turn around a lot of Jackson County's problems. And we have done everything in the world we can to put business out of business here. We've laid out rules that no one can comply with and still make money. No one can apply with or has the money to file. The fines here are atrocious. $17,000 and $15,000 to build a modern home and permits. I mean, that's, we compared that to, I, know, I hate to compare anything to Josephine County with the trouble they're in, but you know, we're only looking at about 7,500 over there. What I've seen is looking through the county and different parts of it, the people that work there, they work very hard. Most of them do a real good job at what they're, what they're doing. But it's the rules, it's the ordinances, it's, it's the, the legislature uh, from the state has put down rules you can't be followed. They can't be. And what I'm about is change. I'm there to represent the people, not represent the county. You've got a lot of people representing the county. The county doesn't need, they need me to represent it. The people need me to represent them. And that's what I intend to do. I have a style of leadership that's a little aggressive. It's a little in your face, 
but it's worked for me for a long, long time without issues. Again, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, why don't you take a look at me with uh, open eyes? Um, I uh, there's a little more to me than you might believe. I'm running as a non-affiliated candidate, but I've been a Republican all my life, and in their beliefs, I, I still am. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, the next uh, candidate is Rick Dyer. Rick. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you again for coming, and thank you for this forum. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, to you all today. Uh, the question is, why are we running? Um, I think I'm going to have to add to the list these amazing free lunches that we're getting. <laughs> that's, that's not the main reason. Um, a couple of reasons I'm not running. I'm not running because I am pursuing some single issue crusade, or I'm not uh, looking at any real narrow agenda that I'm, that I'm trying to pursue. I simply have a passion for Southern Oregon, and a concern, and a commitment. I've lived here almost 40 years, and I intend to be here the rest of my life. Uh, I own a business here. Uh, I was educated here. I met my, I married my beautiful wife, Kara, and I have a 10-year-old son that attends public school here. And selfishly, I would love for him to have the opportunity to stay here in Southern Oregon, to earn a good living like I've been able to, like most of us I think have been able to, and live in a safe environment, and, and I'm a little bit concerned about the prospects right now. Uh, I, I believe I am uniquely qualified for, for the position based on my experience and my education, um, beginning with my 25 to 30 years in local business. Uh, early part, 15, 20 years, I spent as a general manager of car dealerships. My duties there were managing between 50 and 75 employees, multi-million dollar budgets, uh, set in many departments, and of course the day-to-day -day operating and policy decisions that, that go along with, with managing a large business like that. I think that translates pretty well to the Office of County Commissioner. Um, in 2008, maybe it wasn't my best moment of judgment, but I decided to open a contracting company. If you know anything about the construction business in the last six years? You needed nearly flawless business management, budget management to even survive. Well, my business not only survived, it has it is uh, thrived, and it's been profitable every year for the last six years that I've been in business. So I have the ability to operate, uh, to manage a, bu a budget in a business, even during the most difficult economic times. I've been uh, serving on the Rogue Valley Board, Rogue Valley Trans Transportation District Board of Directors for the last five years. Some of the things that, um, the duties there that we have, are, of course, reviewing and approving a uh, multi-million dollar budget, annual budget, uh, county-wide governing body. Uh, also, we've uh, negotiated and approved a couple uh, public employee union contracts, which is an experience in itself, but I think very good experience. Not necessarily a good experience, but it was a good experience. Uh, and, and not to mention, again, uh, responsible for the policy decision making and the day to day uh, operation of a, of a countywide governing body. Um, my education, I received my bachelor's degree in business administration and accounting from Southern Oregon University. And then in 2007, I decided to go back to law school and pursue my JD. So while running my business, serving on the RBTD board, uh, volunteering as a youth coach, classroom volunteer, spending time with my family. I also spent about 25 plus hours a week reading law books, which all of you went to law school, you know how exciting that to be. Uh, taking tests, writing essays, listening to lectures. Um, and, and four years later, I was able to graduate from the top third of my class, and I passed the most difficult bar exam in the country on my first attempt. So I needed to take on some very difficult and complex tasks successfully and set difficult goals that I've been able to achieve. Um, the, the things that I want to make sure the county continues to see as a priority are our public safety. Of course, having a 10-year-old uh, and, and just living here myself, it's important that we can feel safe in our homes, in our neighborhoods, our schools, 
and I want to make sure that we keep our eye on the ball when it comes to public safety. Also on economic development, uh, we need to make sure that that continues to be a priority. I'll speak that here. Uh, and maybe adopt some new plans, but we need to make sure we foster the climate where business can succeed, can expand, can hire and grow, but we're also going out and aggressively pursuing businesses that can do well here. And we have some, some very uh, successful uh, technology sector businesses here that we can go and find similar businesses, sell them on what we have to offer in Southern Oregon, which is an amazing place to live and work. Get them here, like I say, show them, tell them our story and close the deal. I think we could, we could probably see a, a, a large improvement in the number of living wage jobs that are one and a half, maybe two times the median income level here, which those jobs have a multiplier effect where they create even more jobs. Uh, and that's what we, that's the type of policy I, need, I think we need to start looking at with, with uh, regards to that. And I'm going to have to go quickly here. Uh, I do want to get back in our public lands. I want to make sure that we bring them from the state of, of absolute neglect into a more uh, obviously a safer state that isn't in danger in the health, safety, and welfare of the folks here in Jackson County. And I'm going to have to wrap up, but thank you. <laughs> I'm glad he got that last part in. Most of you know that I work with federal forest issues. We're able to breathe today, but in a lot of days it's pretty easy. So thank you for saying that. We might ask a question. Um, the next speaker is Tonya Morrill. Thank you all also. Um, I have had the opportunity of joining many of you over the last several months as Christina and others have invited me. And it, I always leave here inspired by the social and professional networking that you guys provided. So I appreciate that. Um, I, um, as many of you know, many of you know, I've been uh, practicing law successfully in the Rogue Valley um, for 24 years, primarily in Medford. Um, during that long career, I have had the opportunity, and it was a, a lovely opportunity, to uh, be um, city council for several of our cities in the valley. That included general council for the city of Talent, um, the city of Gold Hill, and the city of Shady Cove. And those are some interesting, interesting times. Um, those are in the 90s, and each community has its own differences, and it was it was always an interesting challenge. But I was also special counsel for the city of Jacksonville. And we did a lot of land use work out there. And uh, it was that land use work that led to um, a significant appellate practice that I determined that I really, really loved. And um, so I love reading, reading law books <laughs> and reading cases. Um, and so that, that led me into a career where I was um, doing more, I was uh, doing federal court appointed cases. Because that, that enabled me to get into the arena of doing federal appellate work, which I've been doing for about 13, 14 years, and I was in the Federal Defender's Office for about 11 years, and I'm now back in, out in private practice, and still accepting federal uh, appointments. But being back out in private practice um, has given me the opportunity to start plugging into the community a bit more. At one time, I was um, the president of uh, 12 Point Rotary, which is unfortunately now defunct, but that was, that was a wonderful um, opportunity. We met at the manor, so we got, to, we got to get to know all the great folks and senior active folks that we were to bring into that, that club up there. Um, as I've also been on the on-track board for, for about eight years, and that's been a great experience as well. Um, we all know I, on track does a lot for our community. They, they've really expanded in the last 20 or 30 years, and they have a significant budget that we as a board oversee as well. Um, but with that came another opportunity, and that is we had two county commissioners leaving. So I decided it's time to ramp up my community, community involvement, and I decided to jump into this race. And I do have a mission. I'm, I'm, I'm not bashful about that. My mission is to do what I think we just haven't had the energy to do as we've been dealing with the budget issues over the last five years, and that is we need to focus on economic development. And there's lots of ways to do that. But I intend to engage the community in some strategic planning. And whether that means that we sit down and we look at some new models out there and adopt what 
some of you were here when Mr. Van Hawley, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, did his presentation about um, the state of our economy. And, and he, he talked a little bit about the, the Deschutes model. Um, I talked to Ron Fox the other day about that. And he says, you know what, we, we really have all those components working. We just need some more funding. So whether we're adopting something that's new um, and we need to go look and see what's working out there, or whether we're just increasing our funding to, to um, the organizations that are doing the work, like So Ready and Sustainable Valleys, that's something that I'm, I definitely have a focus to doing. So we need to do some strategic planning on that. But the other area, I have like four areas that are all related to economic development, but they're, they're more broad-based, so they assist the community in many ways. And partly that's because in order to have economic development in the 21st century, we have to work on our standard of living and our quality of life. And if we, if we don't have the capacity of, of our urban systems, our ecosystems, we're not going to be able to be prosperous and have, have the development that we want, whether it's bringing in new, new people in, new companies in or not. So the other area that I'm already working on is um, community planning with regard to uh, developing an energy, clean energy transition. We've got Clean Energy Works doing that work already, but we need to ramp it up. We need to work on energy efficiency because that keeps our dollars here and it also helps put people to work. And so the next step is solar, wind, and those kinds of things. So that's another passion of mine. So we, that's economic development. Um, the other thing is technology plan. I think we need a community-wide technology plan so we make sure that we have affordable broadband. And we, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of coordinating um, what we, need, what we need so that we can bulk buy, so we can get some cheaper broadband, so the rest of the community is benefiting from that. But a technology plan could include all kinds of things, like how to develop um, uh, micro, micro industries, how to develop um, uh, precision farming industries, and that kind of thing. So that's the other big, big goal I have, is to do some community planning with regard to those areas. And, and um, again, it'll, it'll increase our our economic development, and that, that'll go a long way to solving lots of our problems, including um, our health and safety issues that we have. The more, the more economic development we have, the, the better off people are and are able to plug in and be productive in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Those were candidates for position number one for commissioner. Uh, now we'll go through the candidates for position number two. Number three, excuse me, I should know these. <laughs> position three was the one I was going to So the next speaker will be Colleen Roberts. Well, good afternoon, and I do thank you too for a super organizing this and inviting us and for the wonderful lunch. It was very nice and enjoyable. Um, my name is Colleen Roberts, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself because I don't think very few of you even know me, and then why I'm running and, and what I hope to achieve as your county commissioner. And I'm a native of Southern Oregon, uh, born and raised in Klamath Falls, graduated from Rogue River High School, and just a few years ago, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, then I went to college in Forest Grove, and I met Steve, my husband, there, and we've been married for 38 years. I live in, we live in Prospect, we both live there, <laughs> and I heard, heard some wild tales about Prospect yesterday. They said, all you can do up there is sell drugs. I'm living proof that there's more that goes on at Prospect than that. So we have a lot of active, energetic, um, hardworking people in our communities, and those are the people I want to represent. And I, um, I, during that time, I started a business, actually in Eagle Point in the 80s, called Sensational Sweets, and it's a little bakery. I started my home when my children were little. And uh, my sister and I found we could work together, so when we moved to Prospect in the 80s, we um, opened up our own storefront location in Eagle Point. And we've been there for ever since. And we're up on the golf course now. We've incorporated and grown, and um, I do know how to start business, and I know uh, what it takes to run a business through decades of ups and downs in our economy. Um, uh, during that time, also, I finished my master's degree in business administration. So it's that, that uh, combination of practical um, self-employment and education that is one of the qualifiers I feel it brings to this uh, seat as county commissioner. Two years ago, I ran for county commissioner in 2012. And after that time, uh, Doug Breidenthal won the race. I kept going to the commissioner meetings, and um, our little newspaper at Eagle Point uh, 
we lost Nancy Leonard, she passed away, and when Ralph McKechnie took over the paper, he came up to me and said, I can't get to everything. Would you want to write an article about the commissioner news? And I said, I would love that. So for the last three years, I have been covering once a week an article about what was going on in the commissioner meetings. And it's kept my interest in the uh, issues and the challenges of our county, and it's kept our upper road residents tied into what's going on down here. And I, it's very important. I, I laid off during the um, primary, I thought maybe a conflict of interest for the paper, and I saw Ralph at the, at the fair, I said, Ralph, it's time to get an article back in there. And he said, yes it is, so I'm back at it. And uh, it has really been a pleasure to report the news of our county to the citizens. Um, so as the election came drawing nigh, I decided that I'd filed to run. And um, what makes me qualified is in the primary, I won both the Republican nomination and the Democrat nomination for this position. So I think I represent everybody in this room. And I think our message of liberty and freedom resonates across all parties. I think we all want to live free and we want to be productive in Jackson County. And uh, that is my goal that I bring as your commissioner. And uh, what I hope to accomplish, what my main goals are as commissioner are threefold. And one is our economy. And I believe it's not the, the government growing bigger and being involved in your lives. I believe it's the government stepping out of the way. They have overregulated us. They have feed fined us. I know my opponent says, quotes me, says, uh, Colleen says, you can can't feed fine and tax your citizens to prosperity. And, th and that is so right. We need to have government, I believe government should be small and the private sector should be thriving. And um, it is my challenge to have the private sector thriving, whether you want to put a deck on your home or you want to start a business. Um, there's all kinds of avenues that the county can um, get out of the way and, and uh, let, you, let you do your business. Uh, the natural resources are a vital uh, avenue as well. We've let them go and we've breathed the smoke and we've seen cities burn up and that was shameful. And I know we got to go on the Douglas Fire Complex a couple months ago and we saw how private business managed for us and we saw how the federal government man managed for us. There was no management there and we need to be actively involved in, in getting those federal forests back in under our management. Um, I believe that the main purpose of my job as commissioner is to restore the public's confidence in Jackson County government. Many people you talk to do not feel represented. Businesses feel put upon, and I want to bring back that that confidence in our county commissioners, in our government, Jackson County, and uh, and it'd be my honor to represent you as your county commissioner in the next four years. So I thank you for having us again. Thank you, Colleen. The next candidate is Kevin Calvert. Gosh, it's such an honor to be here. You know, looking around, I see uh, community leaders, I see judges, I see people in health and human services, and uh, attorneys, and attorneys, and attorneys. <laughs> I do want you to know that Colleen and I have one thing in common. We don't have to run against it. <laughs> so, we, 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 anyway, it's going to be an interesting campaign. I, I also can't help reflect that the last time I was here at the University Club was last um, late winter or spring when I was uh, helping to lead the campaign to preserve or to create a tax base for Southern Oregon Research and Extension. And Lee Johnson and Jack Day and Ron Kramer, with Ivy May, and others were here. And uh, that it turned out to be a really successful campaign, and we prevailed with 75% of the vote, three out of every four votes. And so if coming to the university club means that the next election, I'm going to get three out of the four ne next votes, or three out of four of your votes, so I think it will be good. So um, many of you know my background, but uh, for those of the, you that don't, I'm just going to make it pretty short. Uh, I grew up in a, in a rural area on a dairy farm in Minnesota. Uh, milking cows and like a lot of young men uh, being really anxious to get off the farm and into the wide world and uh, fortunately uh, through a series of circumstances I was able to do that I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Nigeria when I was 19 I was the youngest volunteer out of 800 in the country 
and worked in agriculture and rural development. And then later, I was in the US Army. I spent a year in San Antonio, Texas, and another year in Asmara, Ethiopia, on an Army Security Agency base, working in the dental unit. And uh, so I spent about three years in my 20s in Africa, and uh, also was able to uh, return to school at the University of Minnesota. I have a bachelor's in political science from the University of Minnesota, a master's in college student personnel from the University of Wisconsin, La Crosse, and a doctorate in higher education administration from the University of Northern Colorado. So in 1979, uh, my girlfriend uh, and I at the time, we were in Colorado, loaded up uh, everything we owned, and, her pickup and my Volkswagen van and we moved to a friend's cow pasture in uh, Olympia, Washington and looked for jobs. And um, it, it was a, a, a long search, but uh, fortunately I ended up uh, at Southern Oregon University and I've been there, or I was there for 26 years, most of it as the director of the extended campus programs. And many of you know that those are the programs that are non-traditional at the university. They were often entrepreneurial programs, programs that required uh, a revenue source. We had to look for ways to support summer session, youth programs, senior programs, distance learning, because we weren't receiving any general fund tax dollars at the university to operate those programs. And I think that's important because uh, the county operates a lot of programs that same way. The airport, the expo, the county clerk's office, the assessor, others are required to generate the revenues as part of the government so they don't have to be funded by tax dollars. And I think that uh, it's a part of my background that can be a resource uh, as a commissioner and uh, help the county to continue to pursue this so that we can operate the county uh, effectively. Um, I, why am I running? Uh, people thought maybe it was heat stroke or uh, you know momentary insanity, but uh, I, I guess I would say there, there are a couple things that, that really uh, jump out at that. Uh, one is that both my wife Barbara and I really believe in the whole notion of community service and giving back to the community. And uh, we've been here for a long time and had a very full and, and rich life and we love this community and the people here and we believe in giving back and I, I want to be able to use the skills and resources I have to do that. Um, who's giving me the one minute sign. Uh, so uh, some of the things that are really important uh, to me are economic development also. Uh, I agree with what Rick and Tanya have talked about with our technology sector. Uh, I'm especially uh, interested in advocating for the value added agricultural sector. We have a lot of microclimates here. We can grow many things and we see vineyards and wineries. We see craft breweries. We see niche food manufacturers. And I believe the county can advocate for those. But the county can't do it alone. We have to partner with So Ready, the Chambers of Commerce, uh, community and civic organizations, with the Workforce Council, with our high schools, with our community college. I've been on the board at Rural Community College for 11 years, and I'm currently president of the Oregon Community College Association, where I meet monthly with the 17 presidents of Oregon's community colleges to talk about how we can better serve students and make them prepare for their workforce and for their lives ahead. And also how can colleges can better serve their communities. So Sue's giving me the high sign, so I, I hope you'll consider me for your vote. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Uh, good job, all of you. So I'll ask you all to come up, and, uh, and if you would as an audience would direct your questions to one or the other person that I won't have to stand up here and try and direct that. Just the candidates who would like all of us. <laughs> Everybody but Brad. Don't give Brad the microphone. Uh, okay. Okay, so we'll entertain your questions now. Go. Well, maybe the candidates just oh, ask them up with answers instead of that. There is this uh, school of thought that argues that Deschutes County, which is in many ways similar to Jackson County, has done a lot better job of coming back from 
a recession than we have. Uh, and the statistics and so forth seem to bear this out. Um, and I would like your thoughts about whether uh, we should try to uh, do some of the things that are uh, going on in Deschutes County or whether that won't work for Jackson County. So do you want that just go down the line and have everybody give your answer? Well, Tanya. Yeah. I haven't had the opportunity of, of seeing the presentation that Ron Fox did for the So, so Ready Boards. So I don't know what all the parameters are, but he, he when I talked to him the other day, he said that we, we are doing the, the same work. It's just they haven't been funded at the same level. The, the county has been funding So Ready at about $26,000 a year. As, as a general matter, there's been other projects that have, you know, um, there have been more monies that are, have been um, attributed to them for, for different projects over the years, but just that's just the base funding level. So, yes, I mean, we need to look and see, and that's why I want to get people together, like Ron and other, other members that are doing this work, to see whether there's something that they're doing that's a little different that we should adopt, and, and we need to consider doing that. He's got some great ideas already, and in fact, he's going to be making a proposal to the, the, the Board of Commissioners real soon to do some, of, some, of the, some new, new work and some of his old work. He's got this idea of doing these virtual buildings, and so that's something they did uh, several years ago, and he'd like to get the funding and start leveraging some, some monies to, to do this. This is a program that allows folks that are coming in and needing a, a 50 to 100,000 square foot building to, to, to do their business, where a lot of the approvals, that we, we found sites, we've got, actually there's a design, it's like virtual buildings, they've got a design made, and um, some of the approvals done already, so we can fast track the process if they if they um, are looking to come here. So that kind of work is what we need to to continue to uh, support. And as county commissioner, you know, I would find the money. We would find the money in order to to do that and leverage the dollars that they find. So, thanks. Okay, that that raises the next thing. Um, Time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so about one minute to answer these yes. uh, questions. Kurt. Yeah. I'll shorten it up for you, sir. The uh, only thing that you need for business to flourish is for government to get out of its way. That's all. For hundreds of years, if there's a need, the private sector will supply it. And they will supply it and make a profit out of it if government will stay out of their way. Every time you want to start anything, you're doomed before you begin. You have to make a loan that you won't be able to pay on for a year just to get the permits to get in. That's my belief. Government needs to stay out of business's way and regulate only when there's public safety involved. And take a good look at what government is saying is public safety. Thank you. Um, about the Deschutes County model, I have not looked at their model and so to talk directly specifically about that I could not. But I think counties can benefit by looking at the positives from every county, what they've done right, and emulate that. Jackson County's been a leader, I'm sure, in a lot of things that they are looking at us for. And um, I hope to take the positives from every county and all the commissioners and make it for the best for the people of Jackson County. Because it's people that I want to represent, and it's businesses. And I agree, when government gets in the way, they don't do the best job as the people do at them taking on business for themselves. I think they are the power and the, the nuts and bolts behind uh, a liberty and free government. Well, I think certainly we can learn from any successful program, and the Deschutes County program, for one, they are funded at, at a much higher level, uh, but that's also by virtue of the fact that they have a, a much higher transit lodging tax revenue because of the large resorts that are over there, so it gives them that advantage. Uh, but I think we can take what we can do and put it at our level and certainly learn from, from successful programs. I think that's silly not to look at something like that. Uh, and I think we can do, there's a lot of other things that can be done to spur economic development. Um, and I do believe that government is part of the problem in a lot of cases. And we do need to make sure we're doing everything to make sure that the government is not burdening businesses. But I don't even want to necessarily help, I just want to kind of stay out of the picture, uh, create the climate that they can succeed in. We can always learn from others, best practices of what the county should be all about. We should be looking at that for all phases of county operation and uh, 
economic development is one of those. I've heard Mark Von Holly's presentation on the Deschutes County and the technology sector and making those, doing that recruitment and investment, and it's pretty persuasive, but I don't know all the ins and outs. I do believe that there is a notion of public and private partnership that we need to be considering. And it's probably a difference of opinion that some of us up here have. I think that government does have a role in partnering with the private sector, and working with So Ready, and working with the Chamber of Commerce, and working with others that are involved in business recruitment and retention, or looking at what are the barriers to, to expansion of current businesses, and we need to see what can the county do to incent them. And uh, uh, it's true that Jackson County is putting the, one of the lowest per capita rates or dollars into economic development of any county in Oregon. And we could do better. We could do better. But we couldn't do better because we were operating at a structural deficit for about a decade. And now we're perhaps at a place where that deficit is manageable and we can begin to make some investments. And so I, I'd be an advocate for the county looking where it can make strategic investments in economic development to bring more prosperity and better paying jobs to our region. Other questions? Boy, this is a quiet audience. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like particularly uh, to address this to, to Colleen. And um, I am quite concerned about the environment. Um, I believe that climate change is the defining issue of our time. And uh, I believe that uh, I want county commissioners in there who are going to recognize uh, these things and do something about it. And so I'm my question was yet to come. That's my comment. Okay. What's your question? So I'm going to get there. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, I um, uh, would like to know uh, from things that you said in the primary and here and yesterday, um, you seem uh, a rather, um, like when people start talking about using natural resources and cutting regulations, too much regulation, not enough management, I see forests being clear cut and that industry running amok like it did in the past. We don't have a very good track record on, on uh, protecting our environment when there is no regulation. And um, so I just, how you, I'd like you to make me feel better about where you're coming from. I'm not trying to make you feel better, but um, we can have the other extreme of no cutting. And um, not that clear cutting is the answer, but management is the answer. And I believe the, uh, the fire safety um, breaks that we're, we're pushing for, at least as a start, very good. Um, I, I think we should manage our forests wisely. And I, that does come with some regulation, but it comes with local control. And if we can get that, we know how best to how to manage our lands, more than Portland knows how to best to manage our lands. Um, and as far as our um, the global warming and, and your issues about that, I think I'm, I'm concerned about clean air and water. Um, that's what makes our county so beautiful. Um, but I do, it does concern me. Um, there is a balance between commerce and regulation and private property rights that has to be measured and weighed from a, an over-regulating federal government over that. And I believe those regulations will come from the federal and state um, levels to us. And as a county commissioner, I will always weigh um, the the good of for the citizens and our private property rights um, over those regulations and take it, always take and consider um, the citizens <coughs> I represent as the priority over those. And I don't know if that makes you feel any better, but I do care about the air and the land and our water. And I, I do believe uh, the private property rights, especially our private property, is, um, is at risk with some of the regulations that are coming down. Thank you. <laughs> So for governor, what I'd like to have you do, uh, you can answer the previous question or just give a little summary, of, give us your last thoughts, <laughs> right around the minutes. Okay, so we'll start with Kevin since we started the time there. Okay. You want to step to the microphone? I'm not sure. I think everybody's hearing a little bit. I, think it's I am a registered Democrat running as the nominee of the Independent Party of Oregon against a registered Republican. And I ask, why should it matter? Why should it matter? Why should county commissioner be a partisan position? Potholes are not partisan. 
I maintain that Republicans, Democrats, non-affiliated voters, and independents all love their dogs and cats equally. And when they go to the animal shelter, they don't want to be treated differently because of their partisan views. And when the commissioners allocate money to the animal shelter and every other county operation, people don't want it being done on a partisan basis. So I say potholes are not partisan and neither are roads, our mental health units, or other county operations. Let's make county commissioner a nonpartisan position like most other Oregon counties. <laughs> well, I'll address um, the last issue as far as the, the timber harvest issue. I think it can be done in a balanced approach that protects all interests. And I think most of the proposals that are coming out now reflect that. I think people in the forest management plan um, procedures or things like will protect the environment, protect watershed, wildlife, the habitat. Everybody, I think, across party lines, that's what everybody wants. Um, and I think that that's the kind of proposals that are out there. But we also want to have good rural jobs, uh, good jobs anywhere, but especially in the rural areas that are dying. Uh, we want to support our rural schools. Uh, there's a lot of counties that are obviously in, in dire financial shape, uh, and we're seeing the consequences from it as well because those revenues aren't there anymore. Um, I think there's a lot of very balanced, common sense approaches to, to doing what we need to do and protecting the environment. Um, and just to close the next one, I know Jackson County is going to be in need of good, strong, effective leadership in the next few years. Uh, we need to protect our quality of life. We need to, to institute policies that get us back, to return us to the levels of prosperity uh, that we can be uh, and that we know we should be. And I think I do have the experience and the education and the principles and values to lead us there. Well, thank you again for today and for the lunch and for coming today. Um, and, and we have a wide range of candidates right before you, a nonpartisan, independent, Republican, and Democrat. We've covered the spectrum without even changing the Constitution on it. And, uh, and my opponent and I do bring a, a diverse representation to you um, for your vote, for your consideration. And um, apparently he thinks there's a problem with taking your dog and cat to the to the Humane Society, because we are currently a partisan board. And if there's a problem, I will check into it, make sure it's addressed. But I, as far as leadership and policy, the commissioner's uh, job is far more than filling potholes. And, and the policies that are made will, uh, one way or another, affect each and every one of us in Jackson County. I believe in a limited government. I believe in a freedom, free liberty, um, free people. And I believe in the voice of the people and the power of the Constitution. And my name is Colleen Roberts, and I would be, it'd be an honor to serve you as your Jackson County Commissioner. By this point, I've lost a question. Anything else? I just ask you to just in a minute, wrap up, All right. uh, give me your final thoughts. I can do that. First of all, 68% uh, of all major elections that are in high position are held by attorneys. 15% of those are held by uh, uh, doctors and teachers. I just wonder how that's worked out for us so far. Comments, there's a lot of things on the endangered species list. And uh, one of them is integrity. The other one's leadership. And the other one, last but not least, is uh, common sense. Common sense isn't too common anymore. I've been a mechanic all my life. I've been a businessman all of my life. I've had very few jobs. The rest of that time I've spent investigating government. I can tell you, common sense uh, for me is uh, every day. I, I cure problems. Don't cost them. People come to me with problems. I cure them. In our investigations that we do at the U.S. Attorney, 91% of the cases we investigate, when we take them to the prosecutor, the prosecutor drops the charges. These charges were not going to be dropped by law enforcement in their investigation. It wasn't going to be dropped by the district attorneys. They were dropped because we brought an investigation level to the attorney in a perspective that they had not looked at. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things to be done. I'm used to rolling my sleeves up. I'm used to dealing with lawyers. I'm used to dealing with politicians. And I know how to deal with them. And by the way, Rick, I'm not a single-faceted candidate. 
I can't count high enough to list the issues that I have with this county and this government. And a vote for me will, I'll guarantee you, be beside you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Lawyers, um, what can I say? We, we, are, we are trained to think analytically and think critically. Um, you know, when it comes to governance, that's an appropriate place for somebody with a law background to be because, you know, it's about approving ordinances. It's about reviewing franchise agreements. Those are the day-to-day -day things. But what, it, what practicing can bring you as a skill set is the ability to listen to people, to understand where the commonalities are, and the ability to, to problem solve. And that's, that's the experience that I have and I am anxious to bring to my community in this position so that we can work on the economic development. But Christine, the other, the other part of it is, as mentioned, not only do we have to have the social and physical infrastructure to have a good quality of life that boosts economic development, we also need to make sure that our systems, our communication systems, our water systems, our transportation systems, our emergency services systems, are ready to address some of these potential impacts that we may face, whether it's persistent drought, whether it's um, extreme weather, whether it's um, catastrophic fire. So one of, the, one of the aspects of that is making sure that we're out there and calling on the federal government to get the money we need to put people back in the forest to maintain them. We need to clear them out so that they don't present this huge catastrophic fire uh, situation that we have. I intend to work on some of the drought issues, too. We can go out and figure out ways of incentivizing people to put in gray water systems and um, rain catchment system, for instance. So all of that work needs to be done. It is a critical time. We do need new vision, new energy to work on some of this stuff, and that's what I um, hope you'll see I, I can bring, and I hope you will vote for me. Thanks a lot. Wow, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. I think this has been really enlightening for all of us. I know I haven't heard all of the candidates at one time before, so learned a lot and really appreciate it. And of course, having a background that I do, I totally appreciate what you're talking about in running for office and in what you're trying to do. So thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. And thank you all for coming.